Hello, hello, hello. I am at the other house now. And yesterday at the other house, I made part two for this video on hallucinogenic drugs and the, and the mind and the brain. And part one is on Nikki Daisy Dandelion. I believe that's, yeah, that's where I made part one. So a couple of days ago and then other things came up. And so, so anyway, that's part two yesterday, part three today. And yesterday the video got cut off because it reached the recording capacity. I'm on this very simple, like a $30 Walmart tablet. And so it doesn't have very super high video recording capacity. I already had two other videos on there and I had to take one out and make room for this one. So hopefully this will record a little bit longer. I don't know how long. But anyway, there's a lot of thoughts that are going through my mind that I need to discuss in accordance to this subject because a lot of people are very misinformed about hallucinogenic substances. They hear things from friends, they hear things from, from kind of like their communities or their you know their 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 peer groups it their whatever movies or something and the absolute truth is not being told with this i think there's that's also a business now you know it's a huge business particularly like black market business a dark web type of business that's going on where you you can buy gummy bears saturated in LSD fluid and those kind of things. And this is my message to anyone who's young. Don't do it. Okay. Don't do this to your precious brain. Okay. So don't do it. So anyway. Um, somebody, someone was weed whacking, and I don't know what, what's going on here. What's that? So I hope they are finished with weed, weed whacking. But anyway, <sighs> so I want to stay on my train of thought. No, I don't want to be distracted. It's very dangerous. Okay, people are not ready even to process any of that stuff that that is being presented to you. You know, hallucinogenic substances, they can be fabricated synthetically, you know, from other substances, or they happen in nature also in very aggressive forms. So, for example, the plants Banisteriopsis copy and Psychotria varietas, they grow in the Amazon rainforest in the jungle. And they are extremely aggressive and potent hallucinogenic plants and when they make tea with it they usually make these really heavy concoctions like I did with Pierce Japonica. Conco concoction is like an like a like much much more intense than tea. It's and there are different intensities of teas also that you can create. So Concoction means it is cooked like for a whole long time uh, with the stuff in it. So you basic you're cooking it tender basically, you know, for a very long time, and then all that stuff gets into the water. So when you make tea, you might cook it only for a very short time, for a minute, or you might just put the plant in and then put the boiling water on it, and that's quite mild. You can do this with probably Banisteriopsis copy and Psychotria varietas individually, using them individually and 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 but I don't recommend them because most people are absolutely not ready for it. This can plunge people into a psychosis. They will never come out of it. Some people have died from those from those I don't know if they have died from the individual plants, but they have died from Aya 
Huwaska, which is the official name in the air, uh, in the Amazon rainforest. So Ayahuasca sessions where they brew these two plants together like they use a whole freaking lot of it and they also pump people full of tobacco which is like really this is like a tradition in the Amazon rainforest with the native people there they 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 put a whole bunch of tobacco leaves, stuff them into their mouths, like where the mouth is full, like this Paul told me, he's, he watched a documentary from, I said I don't even want to watch that film, I have like such OCD with tobacco, I mean the plant itself, you know, I love all plants, but I don't want to drink tobacco tea or have tobacco particles on my clothes or whatever I, I have bad OCD with it so I just somehow it linked my brain linked up like dirtiness with it with tobacco that's just how it is my brain also linked up dirtiness with marijuana so and also pot and weed and and cannabis and whatever these types of plants are that the old hippies have been using and I linked up dirtiness with it and scumminess, so it is icky and smelly and unclean and so I don't want that in my life, I can't stand it. So I, and also, you know, before I was 25, back like when I was 20 or something, people have talked me into trying it and it didn't work at all for me it made me extremely paranoid and the taste of that was uh, i don't know how to describe it it's like it's just it makes your gums feel weird and it's just it what it's just it, it didn't feel good and intuitively i already know i'm very sensitive to these kind of things i knew that this that the alkaloids in it or whatever is in it is not really what 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 helps people at all with depression or it's just an illusion they think it helps them but it doesn't really it's not the real ideal effect okay and it just makes people kind of lethargic and or paranoid you know in my case you know, it made me very very paranoid any of these kind of things made me paranoid okay and I already have because I'm already like I have trauma from the past and so I'm already like wide open I always have been you know energetically psychologically I could never do this what my parents and my brother are doing you know the the repressing of information and and like putting it so far away that they don't even remember it they don't even if someone brings it up brings it up they don't remember it they think what are you talking about so it's amazing how they repress stuff it's absolutely my friend barbara said your parents are master repressors and and that was spot on so that was my father's lifetime mistress who said that to me. My second mother, so, and she and Birgit, they were my best friends. And they both died from the C word. And it's absolutely horrific, okay? This is horrific. And that's one more reason why I get into holistic healing and really digging into this and saying absolutely no totally totally no to the pharmaceutical industry okay that's a mafia type proportion just like you know it's it's out in the open it's a it's an open public mafia while the other one that the, the drug mafia is is not in the open okay so one is over the table, one is under the table, you know, one is visible, one is playing on the, on the black market. They're both equally bad, 
So that needs to be said. This is very, very important. There are medicinal plants on this planet by the by the trillions, I would say. Okay, there are billions of medicinal plants in every single region on this planet. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Alaska. You could be in Norway. You could be in Siberia. You could be in Kazakhstan. You could be in Germany. You could be in Switzerland. You could be at the Côte d'Azur. You could be. You could be in Morocco. You could be in Kenya. You could be in Nigeria or Sierra Leone or South Africa or Australia. It doesn't matter where you are on this planet. You're going to be having. Billions of native plants. The sound came up again, warning me now that uh, the video capacity is reaching. This is really wrong. Oh my god. It doesn't even give me enough video capacity. Not even on two videos. This really sucks. Hmm. But anyway, I wanted to warn you. I want to warn you, horse cousin. We haven't heard from him anymore. His phone is disconnected. He had been in the hospital with pneumonia. And uh, we don't know whether he's still alive. He probably is not alive anymore. Nobody called us. No one, nobody in his family emailed us. We don't know what's going on. But Kenny, for, and we love him dearly, but he, you know, not but. It's just what I'm, I'm trying to warn people about this about the boomer generation they have overdone drugs kenny has overdone drugs when he was young he has overdone lsd many many times he thought that was fun recreational it has made him crazy okay it has made him dependent on the government on governmental support on ssi okay he can't I, I had good conversations with him because my brain is wide open and, and I tuned in with his level of perception, which is wide open, of course, was. I hope he's still alive. So I love you, Kenny, wherever you are, you, you're okay, okay, you're safe, okay, by, you're protected by the blue god, okay. So, but when it came to taking care of himself, when it came to rational thinking and and making any kind of effort in, in in protecting himself financially legally even with other people no way he was completely helpless he had there was no more rational thinking in terms of you know how do i structure my my life how do i make make it from a to b you know i have to be clear sharp minded to do this i cannot be my brain cannot be a mashed potatoes okay even if you have the if you go into the door of perception right it won't do you any good if you have to navigate yourself through life and you know, even if there weren't other people around at all, it would be very hard to do this, to to make it through life in the wild, with wild animals and with nature and with harsh climates and so on, you know. You have to think clearly in order to provide for yourself a decent life, you know. You have to be able to to extrapolate into the future you have to be able to make plans you have to use your prefrontal cortex to to think around the corner to know okay which are the chess moves you know you have to think strategically in a peaceful way you know you have to know okay so if i do this then what are the consequences of that action what are the many consequences that I can see right now that are going to be coming at me, most likely, okay? The probabilities and all of this. Kenny couldn't think this far at all. He was, like, permanently, you know, like, uh, basically like a dog. And 
like like a papa dog or you know a great dane we named our great dane after kenny so and that was that's a big honor for him because kenny redwood our great dane you know, he, his eyes just kind of reminded us of kenny and i'm not going to mention his last name so but you know he was open and and and, and perceptive with so many things but he was not capable of taking care of his life at all not at all he had severe ocd he had rituals he had he he had, he believed in conspiracy stuff he was very easily manipulated people who have overdone lsd are very easily manipulated by any kind of agenda or any kind of girlfriend any kind of person who comes along and says and and takes the rein into their hands over him runs his life his mother was running his life you know he could not do it that made him bitter and that made her bitter that he was bitter at her and so it was a horrible struggle but she was taking care of him she said to me many times nicola I can't die, she said to me. <laughs> and she was suffering with she was very sick physically and and heavily overweight and, and old and with arthritis couldn't walk anymore. She had to walk with, with some with a walker and she said, Nicola, I can't die. She said many times on the phone. I'm so glad that I talked to her. I'm so glad that I that I talked to her several times. She was a very dear friend. And Paul didn't even talk to her, you know, he was kind of awkward or something. But I talked to her and I told her everything about my activism and she seemed to like it. She said, I, I'm so worried about Kenny, what he's going to do when I die. So, Nicola, I can't die. And I felt sorry for her because I can understand, you know, I can relate to this. So, I would feel the same way if I was in her situation. So, you know. It must be very rough to have a child that that you have to worry about. You know. So a child who is over 60 years old. So he would be about 70 now. So I, we have.